science has often experimented on certain animals to determine if they have memories. And we've heard many tales about an elephant's memory, especially toward those who have done him evil. In fact, there's an old saying, he has a memory like an elephant. Bill Henry, Stumpy, and Gray Wolf are going to find out to their amazement how a grateful dog can remember those who helped him. Actually, the help the fellows gave the dog was small and almost insignificant in a ranger's busy day. But the fact remains that they did stop and help a canine in trouble. Well, suppose we get started with our story, The Dog That Didn't Forget. Our story opens on the hog farm owned by Roscoe Dickens and his son Larry. The brood sows have recently delivered their fall litters, and there are hundreds of little oinkers running around in their pens alongside their mothers. Roscoe and Larry keep a watchful eye on their valuable sows and pigs because they've seen some large eagles flying about overhead eyeing a nice tender pork chop dinner for themselves. Right now, father and son are about to go into the house to have lunch. Well, we better take our boots off, Larry. I guess so, Dad. We'll never get all this mud off of them to mother's satisfaction. Yep, she'll skin us alive if we drag mud all over the floor. Right. Sit down on the step, Dad. I'll pull your boots off. Okay. Age before you, then. <laughs> No, it's the respect of youth for its elders. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got a glib tongue, young fella. I suppose you use the same smooth talk on your girlfriend, huh? Oh, Dad, come off her, will you? What's that? Oh, it's them pig-loving eagles. Maybe I can get a shot of them this time. Hey, Dad, you forgot your boots. <laughs> From now on, one of us will stay here and stay in guard. It's foolish of me to let us both go away at the same time. How many did they get? Six. There were three eagles, and they took a pig in each claw. Nah, well, you, you go on up the house and have lunch, and I'll stay in guard. Them flying pig stealers come back again, I'll tell them to pull a round shot, <laughs> they'll have to walk home. <laughs> well, what's all darn funny? You! Me! <laughs> sure, you're, you're standing there, you're stocking feet with mud up to your ankles. Stocking feet? Well, if I ain't a sight for sore eyes. I shouldn't <laughs> laugh. After all, this is serious. But you, you look so funny. <laughs> well, son, there ain't no reason why we can't have a legitimate laugh, even in the face of trouble. Sometimes that's the best medicine in the world for high blood pressure and hot tempers. Give me some clean socks and my boots when you come back from lunch, will you? Sure thing. And if them eagles come back, I'll, I'll kick mud pies at them. <laughs> Roscoe and Larry Dickens aren't the only stockmen in the Naughty Pine area who are having trouble with eagles stealing their livestock. The Bruce brothers have been battling the eagles for several weeks as the giant birds carry off lambs from their flocks. Right now, Biff and Andy Bruce are using their rifles like anti-aircraft guns as they pour out a barrage of hot lead into the sky. I don't think they got any lambs this trip, you. Didn't see him get any. Boy, I sure wish we could get those lamb butchers. I heard the other boys are complaining about the eagles, too. Suppose I mosey around and find out who's having trouble and what they're doing about it. Good idea. I'll stand guard this lead pill dispenser while you're gone. It appears that 
the eagles have quite a fancy appetite. Not only do they like pork and lamb, but they have their beak set for veal as well. Let's drop over to the Sears Ranch as Clarence and Jonathan Sears ride through and around their herd of prime beef cows. The boys sure aren't happy about what they see. Those pesky eagles have been after the calves again, Clarence. Yeah, they sure have. Look at the talon marks in this calves back. Better have the boys come out and patch up the wounded calves. Might get an infection and die. Uh-oh. There's another calf over here with a hide almost torn off his back. I'd like to give those eagles an infection. Yeah, a hot lead infection. We've got to do something about this. Before you know it, those clawing varmints will have all of our calves scratched to bits. I wonder if any of the other boys are having the same trouble. I don't know, but there's one way to find out. You mean over at Ben's store? Sure, why not? Ben listens to the boys as they talk. He's better than a newspaper or a party line phone. Howdy, Ben. Howdy, boys. Drop a barrel and set a spell. Thank you, Ben. What's near out your way? Oh, no, nothing much. Hey, lean over here, Ben, and I'll tell you something. Yeah. What's, what's the matter? You got something secret here? Well, exactly, Ben. You heard any of the boys talk about uh, eagles? Eh? Huh? You say something about eagles? Yeah, that's what I said. You heard the boys talking about eagles. Larry and I have, Jonathan. Hello, Roscoe. You have an eagle trouble, too? And how. I take it that you fellas are being pestered by them, too. They sure are. They're ripping out calves to shreds. Mm. And did you hear that? Yeah. Them buzzards sure have a selective appetite. What do you fellas plan to do about getting rid of them? We haven't any plans yet. We thought we'd drop around and find out if any of you fellas are having the same trouble. Yeah, Ben. You ever heard tell of having this kind of trouble around here before? Yep. Good. What to do about them? Well, let me think a spare here. Yep, just uh, just five years ago this month, the boys in the Shady River Valley had the same trouble. How'd they get rid of the big birds? Mm, don't rightly recollect. And all I know is that they was gone all of a sudden, like. Well, who was it? I got it, did <laughs> Now I remember, sure enough. <laughs> it was that the ranger fella, Bill, uh, Bill, uh, oh, oh, you know who I mean. Bill Jefferson, the boss that, ranger? That's the fella, Roscoe, yes, sir, he done it. Got rid of them there eagles right suddenly. <laughs> Ranger headquarters. Henry Scott speaking. This is Roscoe Dickens. Bill Jefferson there? No, Mr. Dickens, he isn't. Uh, can you get a hold of him quick? Perhaps I can this evening. He's out on the trail and he plans to stay out for another week or so. However, I talk to him almost every evening by radio. Well, I'd sure appreciate it if you can get a hold of him this evening. It's quite urgent. Well, I'll try my best, Mr. Dickens. Is there a message I can give him? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, tell him I'd like to have him come over to my ranch. We need his help. Bill, Stumpy, and Gray Wolf have been out in the forest a number of days now mapping fire lanes. Each year, old fire lanes have to be cleaned of brush and scrap trees. Also, it's necessary to cut new fire lanes every few years to meet the changing fire hazard conditions. The fellows are using the conventional surveying equipment. Stumpy's using the transit, which is a small telescope on a tripod. This instrument has special gauges and scales on it that tell the surveyor what his readings and elevations are. Bill and Gray Wolf do the footwork for the old timer. They carry the long sticks that have height markings on them. Mapping's a rough job because it involves miles and miles of walking. Stumpy is mumbling unhappily to Bill. You must be fire laying happy, Sonny. How many new ones did you have cut, anyhow? <laughs> well, by the looks of this map we're working up, you can say we cleared out quite a few. Uh, Stumpy's one good eye get tired looking through transit. No, see here, you young whippersnapper. I got two perfectly good eyes, and they're, they both work fine. 
Yeah. I'm no surveyor. I'm even a worse map maker. But I will say I get a little cross eyed peeping through this pipe with a knot hole at each end. <laughs> yeah, go on, run your line. I'll watch you. I knew you'd see it our way, Sunday. We only have a dozen more fire lanes to run. <laughs> Them fellas think I'm Columbus looking for the United States. I'll keep them hopping as soon as I get all this contraption set up. Okay, take meeting now. Well, what do you think I'm doing? Reading the Sears robot almanac? What's the matter with them guys in there? Hey, Grey Wolf, look out behind you. There's a wolf. Where did you see the wolf, Stumpy? Riding back at Grey Wolf. He was in this here brush. How big was Wolf? Well, pretty good size, isn't he? Be the Jones, you'd have had your hands full. I'm glad you see Wolf through transit. Holy fellas. Huh? You find fail signs, honey? I sure did. Look here. Oh, he plenty big fellow, all right. I'll say so. Well, we've scared him off. Might as well finish surveying this new fire land and call it quits for the day. Yeah. I sure could do with some vittles. Then have a nice quiet evening around the campfire before turning in. Well, I just finished the Gospel of John. Read it lots of times, but this is new to me as the first time I read it. That tells me that the Bible is God's Word, because I not get tired of it. Well, that's the great truth of the scriptures, fellas. God's word is just as new, fresh, powerful as when it was written. Men have been trying to fathom all of the Bible's truths for thousands of years. And will continue to do so until the Lord comes again. Uh, not right. <sighs> I guess it's almost time to turn in. Hey, I almost forgot to call Henry. I'll set up the radio. <laughs> Why bother, Bill? Let's leave everything peaceful and quiet the way it's been for days since we've been out here. I wish I could, Stumpy. Better check in, though. Well, I guess I'll stretch my legs before hitting the hay. Hey, what was that? Whoa. I see him. Sit still, fellas. I'll have old Betsy a bargain before you can bat an eye. Hurry, Stumpy. Let's have a break of Stumpy. That's a dog, not a wolf. Well, great day in the morning, if it ain't. You're right. He hurt, too. Let's try and get him to come over to us. I'll fix some food that should coax him in so we can help him. Keep coaxing him, sonny. He's weakening. Ah, uh, he's plenty hungry. Food smell overcome his fears of us. Come on, boy. Right over here, fella. That's right. I couldn't do. Ah, you do a good job. Oh, boy. Just a little. You seem a little more relaxed now. Okay, fella. You're doing fine. All right, here's your food now. <laughs> Look at him go up his food. Poor fella probably hasn't had anything to eat since Hector was a pup. Ah, but you like warm fire, too. All right, let's leave him be for a while, fellas. I think he'll stay with us until we can get a look at his injured leg. Okay, fella. Hold still now while I take a look at this leg of yours. A good thing he come for help. The leg will begin to fester. Soon blood poison set yeah, the leg looks like it got tangled up with a small animal trap. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Stumpy. Now, give me the first aid kit. We'll have our friend patched up in a jiffy. Right, right here on top of gear. Say, Bill, you want to talk to Henry on radio? Hmm? <laughs> Thanks, Grey Wolf. No, I forgot all about talking to Henry. Now, see if you can get him while I bandage our friend's leg.
Ranger headquarters calling Bill Jefferson. Ranger headquarters calling Bill. Hey, hey, that's the phone. Hello, Ranger headquarters, Henry Scott speaking. Henry, uh, this is Roscoe Dickens again. Have you been able to get a hold of Bill? No, I haven't, Mr. Dickens. I've been trying for an hour. Uh, how much longer will you try to contact him? Oh, about half an hour. If he doesn't answer then, he won't until tomorrow evening. Call me and let me know what happens in, uh, oh, uh, half an hour. Surely. I'll be glad to. Goodbye. Henry calling Bill. Henry calling Bill. Come in, Bill. Over. Bill to Henry. Bill to Henry. Over. Boy. Am I glad I got you, Bill? I've been trying for an hour. Roscoe Dickens wants to see you right away. Over. You know why he wants to see me, Bill? No, I don't, Bill. But I'll meet you and the fellows out at his ranch if it's all right with you. Okay, Bill. We'll pack up right away and meet you there as soon as possible. Over and out. <laughs> You ready to shove off, fellas? Yep. I'm ready to scoot like a rabbit, Sonny. Hey, where's our friend with the bad leg? Why, well, I don't know, Stumpy. Did you see him leave, Grey Wolf? No. Maybe he'd go off while we listen to Henry and you talk. Mm, could be. Oh, well, he's in good shape now. I think he can take care of himself. Sure. He'd have stayed around if it wasn't. Maybe he's the kind that likes to be lonesome. Roscoe Dickens has relayed the good news over the party line phone, and all of the ranchers and sheepmen in the valley have gathered at the Dickens' home. Henry arrives there in a Ranger patrol car, and an hour later, Bill, Stumpy, and Gray Wolf walk in. In a few short minutes, Roscoe brings Bill and the fellas up to date on what's happened and why they've been called so urgently. So, now you've heard our problem, Bill. We need your help. And we need it quick. Uh, will you help us get rid of the eagles, or should I say, will you get rid of them for us? Because we don't have the slightest idea how to go about it. Uh, yes, gentlemen. We'll get rid of the eagles for you. Uh, well, that'll be one of them. We sure appreciate your help. How long would it take? Well, it may take days or weeks. We got to hunt the eagles' nests and get them there. That'll be pretty dangerous, won't it? Yes, Andy, I suppose so. That's why I suggest we go along. We're trained for this work and used to it. Let's go, fellas. I want to be up in the mountains by sunup. <laughs> I haven't seen hide nor a hair of an eagle. Not up high enough yet, pal. Uh, you mean we've got to go higher than this? <laughs> you said it, Sonny. Those birds are high flyers. They're probably nesting somewhere in those peaks up ahead. <laughs> uh, soon we come to highest point. You said it, Grey Wolf. If I fell from here, I wish I had a parachute. Hey! Look there! An eagle! Nice watching, Stumpy. He flew from the top of the highest peak. Hey! Wait for me! I ain't as nimble-legged as you youngsters, you know. Here, here, grab my hand. Hey, boy! I want to be in on the kill, too, you know. I think somebody's making this peak higher as we climb it, Bill. Oh, a little more patience, pal. We'll be to the top soon. Hey! We made it! There's Eagle's Nest! But there ain't nobody to hold! Eagle 
fellows ain't very cordial. Here they got house guests, and they let us sit here like bumps on a lawn. Not for long, Stumpy. Huh? You see some? Yeah, he sure does, Stumpy. Here come three eagles. All right, let's get our positions, fellas. Pick your targets. Yeah, I'll take the one on the right. You might take one in the middle. I ain't got no choice. I'll show for the other one. All right, everyone ready and make it count. Good shooting, boys. All right, let's go home. <laughs> you ought to see Bill and the fellows now. They're really taking it easy at headquarters after almost running up the mountains after the eagles. Stumpy's got a generous supply of linen, and it's warm, relieves his aching muscles. And a smile spreads over his face. There's a look of sleep in his eyes as he leans back in his chair. Bill, Henry, and Gray Wolf sit back with contentment on their faces because they've just completed a tough job. The bandit eagles will rob no more. Roscoe! That's right, Bill. Thought you said you shot all the eagles. Yes, I did say that. Huh. Well, I guess you fellas can't count to three. Huh? What do you mean? We sure can count to three. What's more, we shot three eagles deader than a tombstone. Well, then there must be a fourth eagle. Are you choking? No, sir. The largest eagle I ever seen just attacked my pigs. Listen to that birdie cut loose with a war cry. Oh, boy. He sure is a whopper, all right. See if you can... Pick him off from here, Stumpy. Yeah, I don't think I can do it, Bill. I'll sure give it a try. Nah, they ain't no use, sonny. We gotta go after him. Be careful, fellas. This is dangerous climbing. That's a good thing we don't have to go straight up. Uh, and how? Bad enough climbing halfway straight up. Ah! Oh, Stumpy, Stumpy, what's wrong? Yeah, I got a muscle grab in my leg. There, I'll help you, Stumpy. No! Go on, get that eagle. I'll catch you up as soon as I get this crab rubbed out. <laughs> It's not too far now. You better rest here, Henry. You're pretty winded. The air is getting rarer by the minute. Yeah. Yeah, Bill. I think I'll sit down and rest. Yeah. I'll catch up in a few minutes. That's a good boy. Come on, Grey Wolf. It's up to us now. Easy now. Gonna have to walk right into it. Uh, there's no other way to get Eagle. I ready. Only a few more steps. We'll be right in his nest. I uh, wish this big rock weren't in our way so we could shoot from here. Look out, Bill! Giant Eagle has descended on Bill and Gray Wolf. Gray Wolf tripped and stumbled backwards, striking his head on the huge rock. Now Bill fights the massive bird alone. He tries desperately to get his rifle up into firing position. But he can't. So now he's using it as a club to ward off the angry Eagle. Bill moves like a box. Then suddenly he slips on the ground of his rock and he goes halfway over the edge of the mountain top ledge. He tries desperately to hang on and crawl back, but he can't get a good grip with his hands. The mad bird sees his advantage and swoops down for the kill. Henry quickly sizes up the situation and comes running, but he's too far away to help. The big rock is in the way of his line of fire. There is a drop. The eagle's almost on him. Henry's wild shots didn't scare off the vicious bird. Bill will never be able to hold on and fight the bird. The eagle's wings and beak will drive him off the ledge. A wolf! A wolf is fighting off the eagle! No! no it's a dog! As the dog and eagle battle, Henry throws all crushed to the wind and swoops over and pulls Bill back on the ledge to safety. Bill grabs his rifle and quickly draws a bead on the eagle. I 
Eagle had got you, Bill, you'd be dead now. I'll say I would, pal. It's 3,000 feet straight down. Thanks to our canine friend, I'm alive. Oh, where'd that dog come from? I didn't see him following us. None of us did. Who knows where he came from? Thank the Lord that he did, however. That's the same dog we helped the other night. Where dog now? Hey, he's gone again. Now, where do you suppose he ran off? I don't know. He's probably satisfied that he repaid us for our kindness to him. Yeah, sure That's one dog that didn't forget. <laughs> You're right there, old-timer. Animals do have memories. At least some of them do, and it's a good thing for Bill that a dog did remember. Boys and girls, when someone helps you, remember it. You may not be able to repay the same person who was kind to you, but that doesn't stop you from doing the same thing for someone else. Remember, the Lord said, we should do unto others as we would have them do unto us. We'll see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill back again for just a third of a minute with an extra word of thanks to you for joining us today. Hope you'll team up with the Rangers every week at this time when your local station gives us this chance to get together. See you then. <laughs>